Hey there, it's Chris from Goodroads, and I do a lot of 3D printing projects here on the channel, and I thought it was about time I introduced you to the little mechanical monsters in my employ that help me keep the company running. And I'm going to start with this little robot right here, my MP Select Mini, version 2. This quirky but reliable printer is a relatively inexpensive machine for its capability, and I got mine for about 100 bucks used off eBay. It's a bit of an oddball. It needs a very specific, outdated memory card, it takes forever to heat up, and the stepper drivers are old, so they're pretty noisy. But it's got a great build volume for its footprint, and it can churn out plastic at an impressive speed. And in the three years since I've bought this printer, it has been in pretty heavy production use, making parts and tools for GoodroadsCollective.com. Now inevitably, when you work a machine that hard, parts wear out, and another advantage of this machine is there's a huge community of users, and almost every issue you might come across has been addressed in some way already. I've run into two of the most common issues with this machine, and I'm going to show you how to address them, starting with the heated bed. The way the wires for the bed are routed in the original design lacks strain relief and puts a lot of wear and tear on the cables. I had soldered and reinforced them as a quick fix, but now the part really does need replacing. And luckily that's a pretty easy job, as the whole heated bed arrangement can be had for cheap and as a replacement part, and the replacement even has protected cables. The one thing that doesn't come with the replacement bed though is this insulating material which is important to keep the bed up to temperature. So I just peeled mine off the old bed and stuck it in place on the new one. Or tried to, anyway. It didn't stick very well, and I'd really prefer for it to be attached better, so I'm going to use some of this aluminum tape to tack the insulation in place and enclose it. And hey, that looks pretty good. And I'm fairly certain I can rely on that tape to stand up to any temperature I'd run the bed at on this printer. The next thing I want to tend to is more of an upgrade than a repair. I'm going to replace the stock build surface that comes with the replacement bed. And in preparation for that, I peeled off the old build surface. Then I peeled off the adhesive. And then I cleaned the whole bed off with acetone. And with that done, the new bed is ready to install, but if I leave things as is, I'll run into the same issue of frayed cables all over again. So I'm going to get a little out of the box, and I'm going to modify the case and reroute the bed cables in a way that I think will put less strain on them. I started by drilling a new hole in the base. Ooh, ha! Hot, hot, hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot, hot, hot. Okay. Cool. And I stole the grommet from the original hole. I can use this to protect the wires from the sharp edges of the hole that I cut. And while I was working on all of that, my other printer was making this TPU strain relief part that I designed. I drilled mounting holes in the Y carriage of the printer, and mounted the strain relief in place. I fed the cable through the new hole in the back of the machine, reattached their wires in the place on the board, and closed up the box. I reattached the heated bed,
and anchored the cable in the strain relief with zip ties. It's a little extra and a little bit more DIY than perhaps a standard printer upgrade might be, but I'm pretty happy with the outcome. And yeah, that's looking a lot better. Now, what about that build surface? Well, I'm upgrading to a magnetic build surface from Wham Bam. Since I do a lot of production with this machine, the ability to quickly remove parts will help me reduce my cycle times and allow me to make more parts faster. I cleaned the heated bed one last time and laid the magnetic sheet in place. Next, I popped in the spring steel sheet, And nowadays, these kits come pre-assembled, but I got this earlier in the year, so I had to stick down and treat the build surface myself. No big deal, just a little burnishing to remove air bubbles and a little scuffing with steel wool to make the surface stick a little better. The other well-known failure point on these machines is the Bowden connector in the extruder. The one that comes stock in the printer eventually breaks. To remedy that, I simply printed myself this excellent upgrade designed by Wiley Kyoto. Great name. It uses much more robust M6 Bowden connectors, and it also has a number of other small design improvements that make it a much nicer part to work with. I especially like the longer, stronger lever arms. And with the extruder working again, the machine is ready to print. Fortunately, None of these upgrades require any firmware updates. Foreshadowing. And the removable build plate simply requires a slightly higher bed temperature for any given filament. And when the printing's done, you can just pop the part right off. And that's my little printer that could up and running again. Over the years that I've used this machine, I am consistently impressed with the work it does. I used it to print the entire run of the original Scarab drilling guides, and if you got one of the Bishop router mounts from me, there's a good chance it came off this printer. It has its quirks, but once you figure them out, it is a reliable, hardworking machine that is great bang for the buck. So if you got any questions or comments, or you want to know more, just hit me up down below. If you want to meet my other plastic pushing robotic employees, just go ahead and subscribe. The next time we visit the topic, we're going to take a look at and upgrade my large format printer. Thanks as always to the rad crew who support me over on Patreon. I love having you all along for the ride, and until next time, I'll see you soon.